Oh, Jesus! Oh, God! Oh, God! Holy oh, shit! Oh, shit! What have I done? What have you done? What have you done? Hey, 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 party people. How's it going out there on the interwebs? We're watching another Zeth Zintak video, and uh, this one is Wizardry 8 Extreme Roleplaying. So, um, <laughs> I noticed in the thumbnail for this that he had a certain Australian who uh, may or may not be an old man. Hi there. He, he's got an internet historian in this video. Apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, so... That's uh, awesome. Yeah. Also, I'm digging the uh, Steel Series mouse pad. Is that a... Uh, I'm going to say... Look at all this soundproofing foam that he has. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hilarious amount of like why wow, on the desk? I don't know. Also, I have those exact same speakers. I I'm not using them right now because they're in a box in my room, but yeah, those are some pretty some pretty good speakers. Anyway, um yeah, so Seth is uh playing uh, Wizardry 8. I have no idea what this game is. And more of you out there want us to watch more Seth, and this was in our recommendeds on our Discord, so, yeah, making sure that you all keep aware that on our Discord is the main place to request stuff from us. I mean, that's that's how we knew about this. So anyway, um, no high amount of dilly-dallying on this. We're just going to hop right in and see what kind of game this is, and how, and I guess we're going to see if Internet Historian is truly a uh, high-level gamer, as I've heard him call himself quite a few times. Anyway, here we go. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Today, I'll be breaking away from tradition. I'll be covering some old-ass game that's probably very obscure, long, frustrating, dehumanizing, but also very fun. Ask yourself, have you ever wanted to experience the role-playing equivalent of poisoning yourself <gasps> repeatedly <laughs> I am afflicted for many weeks? I got dibs on his stuff! Until you gradually build up a tolerance for self-inflicted pain and suffering. You see, much like eating a bag of raw potatoes, do it in one go, and you might die. But do it gradually, and you might live. Keep at it, and you might just start enjoying it. I present to you Wizardry 8, released in 2001 by the Canadian government. Wizardry 8 is one of the finest torture devices to be released on the personal computer. Wizardry 8 takes place in the Dragon Ball Z extended universe. You and your party are space traveling aliens hired by the Wookiees to retrieve all three remaining Dragon Balls, the Astral Domine, the Chaos Malari, and the Destiny Dominus, and use them to ascend as literal gods and reshape the universe. Ascension takes place on a planet called Dominus. Unfortunately, the process of ascension has been complicated by the involvement of a dark savant, who, to put it simply, is Space Hitler, setting up an interplanetary, anti-Semitic blockade around oh, Dominus. Okay. Unfortunately, your ship bears the mark of David and is quickly shot out of the sky, forcing you to make a crash landing. All things considered, that's not too bad. Except, Space Hitler has also rigged the planet with a nuclear payload that is large enough to glass the entire surface. In case anyone who isn't Space Hitler tries to ascend. I hope you're following all this, because this is just the intro. And now I'm gonna quickly summarize the plot to help you understand how amazing this game is. Space Hitler is not very popular. As a result, he loses the only Dragon Ball he has to the Italian Mafia, because he neglected to pay their godfather, Don Barlone. By the way, the Italian Mafia in this game is composed of rats and speak in an Italian-American accent. Me? I'm always in top form, not just Ratkin, Razuka, pal! Yeah! Wow. Okay, then. Just like Mama used to make. Hey, I'm walking. Like, yeah, you gotta be sure to throw in a bunch of the Italian stereotypes. Like, hey, I'm walking here. Come on. Whoa, what are you talking about? Come on, forget about it. It's a fugazi. Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, also, I keep I keep going back to <laughs> just the ridiculousness of some plot setups. This is not the most ridiculous plot setup I've ever seen, but it's close. It's pretty close. Oh, yeah. The Order of Paw. You might consider us a 
family of sorts. Don Barlone switches out the Astral Dominate with a shiny salt lick. The Melanated Master finds so out. Are you and sure has the Internet Historian is in this, or is that just the guy from the meme the Internet Historian drew his picture after? I think it actually is. I think it actually is him. I guess we'll see. Because, again, the dude doesn't speak very much English, and I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be into playing this this game because he's from what I understand he's not really a, I'm not saying like actually him I'm just saying Seth using that picture for his character well I mean again I don't know but I would say maybe again I don't 100% know I I just saw that and dude I see that picture and I'm like oh internet historian I mean hold on let's see His name's not down here. Maybe it isn't him. Maybe I'm just full of shit, and I'm just... I was hoping Internet Historian would be in this. <laughs> anyway. Tantrum in front of you. You'll come to find this is a common theme. You take the imitation and buy the real thing. It costs most of your life savings. So instead of paying, you might try and whack him instead. Luckily, the best tricks are so nice that they work twice. First, you gotta get chummy with the Umpani or the Trang. This is the choice between authoritarian rhinos or literal bugmen that reproduce faster than India. I usually roll Umpani because we share a common bond in our attraction to anthropomorphic rhino girls. Siding with one of those lets you visit the local Wookiee embassy to have a look at their Chaos Malari. And by having a look at their Chaos Malari, he seems like an honest, trusting guy. And those are my favorite kinds of people. I mean, snatching it in front of them, apologizing sincerely, and then replacing it with a knockoff glass bulb. Then you gotta find the Destiny Dominus, which is really the search for enlightenment. As the source of all knowledge in the universe, you find it naturally by consuming a lot of psilobison, DMT, <laughs> and ayahuasca. So you can project yourself a to a higher Simon, plane of consciousness actually. and talk with Joe Rogan. <laughs> I was gonna make a Joe Rogan <laughs> joke, but he beat me to it. Damn it. And plus, and plus, that's a pretty accurate Joe Rogan. It's like, let me tell you about chimps, man. With all three Dragon Balls in your Dragon Sack, there's still the small matter of nuclear oblivion. Dragon so, you next. gotta go up north and offer your sweet body to a goat demoness. This game was very progressive for its time, because Alcidexus is fiercely heterosexual, and rejects the very concept <laughs> of scissoring. She also rejects the concept of monetizable content, because her milk jugs are anything but modest. Anyway, to disarm the bomb, you have to get inside it. How? By breaking and entering into people's bedrooms, because, logically speaking, one of them is bound to have a direct access interdimensional portal into the bomb, which can be disabled by pressing random keys and getting lucky. With a bomb no longer armed, you smack <laughs> the savant, leaving him disarmed. The savant dies, but in his death reveals to you the ultimate truth that he's been using a voice changer on Discord this whole time, and He's not actually that dark. The end. Any questions? No? Then in that case, welcome to Wizardry 8. I love this game. Now let's talk about playing it. To play, you need to make a party. From characters, you make yourself. If I said there's a lot of options, that would be an understatement. Jesus. You can be anything you want to be. Humans, non-humans, subhumans, furries, scalies, more furries, and even short kings. There's so many short kings in this game, you can pick by your preferred self. Size. Anything from 5 foot 11 kings to a 5 foot 10 pocket prince, who are so <laughs> light at this point they get carried away by the wind. Race. Is there a link between race and I? There's 11 races, and that's only including ones you can pick. There's about 16 in total. Do anything you want to do, and I mean it. I don't care how many classes your game has, because Wizardry 8 has 15, including, but not limited to, fighters, which fight, Valkyries, which fight using female privilege to avoid death. Ninjas, which fight with the empty space representing their lack of contribution to the team until two weeks into the average game. However, if you rolled a fairy ninja, congratulations, because your pocket prince can now solo the entire game. Alchemist makes potions and breaks the economy by making infinite potions you can sell for infinite money, letting you buy everything in the entire game. 10 out of 10, working as intended. Gadgeteer, who uses an unconventional form of weaponry. 
a gun. But that's the boring <laughs> part. The interesting part is overloading a microwave in a monastery, ripping out the microwave chip, and using it to give your enemies brain tumors. Gadgets are essentially random pieces of trash duct taped together to inexplicably cause widespread devastation. And if you think that sounds ridiculous, then let me tell you about the Bard. In most games, a Bard plays music, keeps up morale, and probably cooks and cleans for the party as well. In Wizardry 8, the droning melody of a bard's bagpipe brings pandemonium, the plucking of his harp causes cerebral hemorrhaging, and the <laughs> blowing of his horn results in nuclear fallout. Bill so basically, if a non-metal head listened to uh, Black Tongue for the first time, their brain would literally explode from from just the high level of, of like metal and disgustingness. They would probably more likely just be like, why are you listening to this? It's all like garbage. That's what most of them do. Uh, I heard, I, I think it was Bing who said it in a Badger video. It's like, if you went back in time and you showed like someone who lived in the 1600s a bunch of memes, their heads would literally pop from like just... Uh, Either that, or they would just club you over the head and, and say that you were trying to sell them witchcraft. I mean, that's what I think would happen. Building the optimal six-man party is difficult. Explaining is difficult, and we don't have time. Here's my build. Follow it, copy it, enjoy it. It's very powerful, very well-rounded, and gives you a complete first experience of a game. By the way, this game's got a lot of voice dialogue. I've got a surprise for you! Stand still so you can get it between the eyes! And most of it comes from your own party. I almost feel normal. There's 18 different personalities for each gender. There will be many implements of destruction at my disposal, Damn. yeah? Which is 36 fully voiced personalities in total. Yeah, slice and dice them, no sense being nice to them! That's my motto. Wow. That the level of depth, the fact that they have 36 voices, like 36 voiced characters for every single one of the uh, yeah. and and Elder Scrolls can't even bother to I, mm, never mind. And that's absolutely nuts. Now, onto the fun stuff. I present to you all my current party. That's right, I manually imported all this to work inside the game. By the way, they're fully animated. The portraits, not even that bad. But manually animating the eyes and mouth? Yeah, that took a while. As our first fighter, we got Internet Historian. Physically, oh, he's okay. Right. <laughs> Mentally, he's... Ah, a trap. I wonder what would happen if I just pulled this thing here! He's very stable. Mr. Mandalore as our second fighter, whose voice I absolutely adore. How exciting. I think I'm improving. Oh no. More people. They just keep coming. And coming. I'm getting stressed. It's just <laughs> so expressive. As our morally bankrupt, backstabbing, conniving, and scheming G We got my man Uber Danger as a rogue wow. who sounds Nerd exactly that. as he does in real life. I'd rather be recognized with cash, but a rise in status will do. Oh yeah, this is amazing. Uh, nothing special. Uh, yeah, probably worthless. <laughs> I'll just uh, hang on to it for us. Uh -huh. uh, you go on and fight. I'll guard the rear. For spellcasters, I put Frederick Newton as our resident psionic. Dude. There's nothing wrong with him. He's actually the most well-adjusted of the entire group. Gotcha! I am glad to be alive again, though the stillness of death was not totally objectionable. Also, I put him as female. Sorry, Fred baby, but the best jewelry in this game is for girls, and we need to min-max myself Damn. as the party's <laughs> dark, brooding alchemist. Ordinary men fear the power of darkness. I revel in it. Who, over the course of the story, has been one-shot many times. <laughs> that guy! What was his name? Thanks so very much. Why did you tear me from death's sweet embrace? I ask myself that question so many times when I get out of bed. It's like, why did you deprive me of death's sweet embrace? And my brain was just, and my brain was just like, because we need to make money for YouTube. Oh, okay, fine. And finally, Ken Ashcorp as our local priest. Be careful! I can't believe we're wasting time talking to a chipmunk! 
Punk! Who's also completely unhinged. I did originally consider adding Pyro Cynical to the team, but What's unfortunately, that? YouTube yes. does not let me feature miners in this video. There's a lot to do in Wizardry. Explore amazing places, visit the swamp, catch malaria, climb a tree, get body blocked for hours by hamsters, go to the only functional city in the game with a grand total population of about 12 people, get harassed by Space Hitler and the androids of the Fourth Reich, head to the bar, get blackmailed, go to the bank, because of course it's still open, go to the airport, because why not? Because this is the one game where you can talk to a starship and tell it to go fuck itself. The dialogue system in wow. this game is nothing short of amazing. You have to manually write down, memorize, and figure out the keywords for conversational topics you're interested in. The game will then try to wow. identify your intent and produce you a fully <laughs> voiced answer. Amusing yourself, are you? There's not many NPCs in this game, but I remember every single one of them. Whether it's the Umpani and their militaristic tendencies. Oh, come on, come on now, stupid thing. Get in there. Perfect. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh no. The slick talking Don Barlone of a Razuka? We keep our end of the deal, you know. But he slips town before he pays our fee. So, we're here to collect. But, <laughs> he ain't gonna pay. That ain't a problem. We get a cash, and you get your prize. And the Dark Savant gets shafted. Or even your own biological daughter, conceived as a result of sleeping around with demons, because their voice acting is absolutely fantastic. Some can even be convinced to join your party. Unfortunately, most of them are highly superstitious of their own planet, and won't go where you want them to. You know what, boys? This place reminds me of a song I wrote called, I Ain't Going There No Way No How. The workaround to this is running them to exhaustion with a heavy backpack, knocking them unconscious, and forcibly dragging them past the load screen. Once they wake <laughs> up, they'll complain and bitch about this breach of consent, which is why people generally avoid them. Except RFS81, who is the best boy, because unlike everyone else, he's not programmed to be a bitch. Quests are also equally brilliant, until you get stuck, until you get frustrated and desperate enough to read the damn walkthrough instead. There's no shame in that because I do it. And I finished the game twice. Some of my favorite quests include protecting a verified Twitter user from hateful comments online by crushing someone into meat paste after luring them in using the sweet aroma oh. of a female girl, getting motion sickness <laughs> from the mine tunnels, and of course retrieving the black box flight recorder of a crashed ship so you can triangulate the position of Space Hitler's ship and use a heavy surface to air battery to shoot him out of the sky. Three, two, one, firing. Oh god. Yeah, this game goes zero to a hundred <laughs> real fast. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to something sensible, like using medieval weaponry to kill fantasy creatures. The biggest part of this game, from beginning to end, from the moment you wake up on that beach to the moment you pass out each day from exhaustion, is combat. This game has a lot of fighting. A lot of fighting. The hardest thing in this game is to simply walk unmolested through a short forest trail, which is physically impossible, because every step of the way you'll be harassed, molested, and physically assaulted by the entire regional populace. Should you survive your first experience of the great outdoors, you'll reach Arnica, the first city in the game. And don't worry, that's where I also let my guard down. Sleeping with a door open, peeking out from a dusty window, only to catch a faint glimpse of moving pixels in your peripheral vision, I'm very sorry, but you are now in combat with the entire city, because even civilization is an unstoppable barrage of random encounters. To understand my frustration, here's an example. Previously, I have walked five meters on a tropical island, got jumped by crustaceans, walked five meters back, because I realized I was going the wrong way, got jumped by more crustaceans, only to walk forward again and get jumped by the same group of crustaceans which have now respawned. This wouldn't be so bad if combat I thought this game seemed really cool until this part, and I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'd have fun with this then.
It is, and it's slow. This won't hit you immediately, but believe me, it will. And once it does, the following information will make sense. Hello, future viewer. Like you, I have also had a mental breakdown after watching combat animations for many hours. So, I've installed the Wizardry 8 speed mod to quicken animations. I'm running Wiz 8 fast at 625 times speed, and Jeez. I'm simultaneously speed hacking the game with Cheat Engine at free time speed. And it's still slow, but don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean combat is easy. It's absolutely the opposite. It's sadistically hard. It doesn't care and it's going to keep beating you until you break. She was a saint! A saint! Sure, you can put down the difficulty. You're still gonna get shredded by the 10 plus juggernauts that just came out of camouflage. The only way to avoid dismemberment is to play intelligently. This game is a constant battle of overwhelming odds versus your own capacity to game the system. To charge the juggernauts is suicide. They swing potentially three times a turn and they're not stupid. They're gonna surround you, flank you, and hack your spellcasters to pieces. Positioning is important. Instead of charging, we hurt herd them into a choke point. Their numbers become worthless, and we reduce the fight into a glorified meat grinder. And that's not hyperbole. Enemies get visibly wounded the more you hurt them. It provokes a very Pavlovian response, as I get satisfaction from seeing whatever has inconvenienced me get reduced to a bloody pulp. Other times, I'm left thinking, Jesus fucking Christ, please stop. Just put him out of his misery, as I'm beating a bandit so hard that we've ripped the very skin off his face, and his skull is visibly <laughs> poking through the flesh. Tactics are important. Your fighters do most of the damage. Your mages control the battlefield. Why deal with the crowd when you can make the crowd insane and kill each other in a psychotic rage? And if that doesn't work, paralyze them, curse them, give them topical dermatitis, make them throw up, and induce nausea. You know the Jesus. best way to stop an animal attack? Diarrhea. Because it's very hard to focus on anything when your ass is exploding. However, any status that affects enemies can affect you as well. And you'll find it's very hard for your party to focus when they're in the process of getting bored and digested by wild animals. Something's different, but I can't put my finger on it. Hmm. Luckily, combat is extremely rewarding. You only have to win a couple of fights appropriate to your level to level up. With that comes increased stats, skills, and spells to expand your options. Also, the game gets harder. Early game might be spent on the verge of death. But given time, you'll find that this is a constant state of tension, except you're no longer afraid of it. Instead, you learn to enjoy it, and even revel in the act as you realize you're quite good at it. I do, however, have some critique. One, traps. Traps are randomized, and one of them stole 90% of my current assets. Philosopher's Bane turns your gold into lead, and I forgot to quicksave. On the other hand, my critique is also praised, because traps are a perfect example of how goddamn good the sound design is in this game. First, you gotta tumble around to try and guess the mechanism. Next, you need to try and disarm them one at a time. Listen to this. The sound is so goddamn crispy that you can physically feel the tension as your rogue fiddles with a machinery which can snap at any given moment. No! Good God, I love it. Just to remember to save. Two, lockpicking. Lockpicking is not based. It is cringe. It is an endless hell of clicking tumblers to make them rise, only to watch the rest fall as you persist in your futile struggle. Which is why I strongly recommend you use earth magic to magically hold the tumblers, because otherwise you're gonna have a bad time. Three, pickpocketing. Don't even bother, because it's fucking broken. No one's really sure how it works, but but you can't save scum, and the responses are hard-coded. It's actually almost creepy. I once pickpocketed an NPC five times with the same negative outcome, only to reload the quick save and discover that the NPC was missing, or rather that they were deleted from my save file, as if to send me a message. I know this sounds like I'm losing it, and you don't have to <laughs> believe me, because I managed to record the whole thing. Four, other weird shit that happens. I used to think you couldn't alt-tab out of this game because alt-tabbing breaks the keyboard. Turns out, it doesn't. You just have to hit the alt key once again. How could you know this? You can't. How did I learn this? I smashed my keyboard and it worked. Then, I reduced the surface area of my fist, smashed keys at random. Why is he wearing a sock on his hand? Why not? 
them until, through order of elimination, found the secret combination. This game has several features on the level of esoteric knowledge. <laughs> that is to say, nobody knows shit. Wizardry 8 is absolutely fantastic. Yes, there's annoying bullshit to deal with, but hey, it's almost two decades old and released in less than ideal circumstances. That's why there's still a fucking hardware advert that pops up whenever you try and close the game. Because the publisher was broke and the developer was about to be. So they had to shill out by advertising higher FPS in a turn-based RPG where FPS doesn't matter. On the other hand, holy shit, that advert aged well. They still exist to this very day. Pre-built computers? Now that's a future-proof business model, not some turn-based PTSD simulator that blew its <laughs> entire poly count on jiggle physics. This game wow. will try to break you. It'll spit in your mouth, call you names, and crush your self-esteem. But if you persist, that's when real satisfaction kicks in. When you're no longer at the mercy of its bullshit. It's the feeling of control. And let me tell you, it is an all-encompassing, intoxicating sensation. I give Wizardry 8 an extremely high score. I also give it 80% off on GOG, because <laughs> I have that power. All this for about $2. If it sounds like something you'd enjoy, give it a try. An average playthrough will run you anywhere between 100 to 150 hours of game time. And given the vast range of builds and character classes, it is very much replayable, preferably with breaks of several years in between. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one, stay safe, and please enjoy the credits. He seems like a kind, generous soul. I hate him. What do you want? <laughs> if it walks... I can change that. I'm burning to kill. You gotta admire the guy. He didn't let a little thing like being dead slow him down one bit. So now I'm a Templar Rapax. All my childhood dreams have come true. Oh, great swimming. I hate swimming. I didn't come a million miles to get all soggy. I'm filled with glee. We won. I think we can make an all right universe if we put our minds to it. <laughs> Chaos. Ooh. -hoo. Death has taken him. Lucky fellow. You know, <laughs> they said I was crazy when I told them I'd take over the universe one day. <laughs> Ow. Master, it is my duty to report a life form disappearance. You know. That was the single most traumatic moment of my entire life. I'm not a man to hold resentments. I like to forgive. Maybe you could expedite that process a little by, uh, you know, a cash settlement. His death comes as a surprise. He showed so many traits of a strong alpha male. We got <laughs> it! Now let's get out of here before bells and buzzers go off. I'd hate for this to turn into some kind of bloodbath. Yeah, <laughs> hate it. You know, when someone gets a big kill like that, his friends usually pitch in with some kind of reward. Really, they do. Who shall be your sacrifice? Taken care of. Ah, beautiful choice. <laughs> I have been transfixed by the demoness and used for her sport. It's like a beautiful dream. <laughs> Wait, Didn't I see anything. I have a confession. You recall that Rapax demoness that I, uh, well, we, uh, suffice it to say that she has bewitched me somehow. If I leave this place, I suffer the torments of the damned. The only way to stop it, oh, I am afflicted. The demoness possesses me no longer. Why is it that all my affairs end in bloodshed? You can't con a con, savant. And you can't steal from a thief. But you can kill a killer. Especially if you're me. Good night. Alright then. Damn. We put a lot of work into that game by the sounds <clears throat> of it. Yeah. Some, again, just a ridiculous amount of work into that game. Wow. So, I'm curious if Seth has actually done another game. I think that if he hasn't, it would be right up his alley because it, 
this game had stuff that reminds me of what I've heard about it. What is it? Pathologic. No, he hasn't. Yeah, Seth, you need to check out Pathologic, man. It's like exactly the kind of game you would make a video about for sure, I know, 100%. Yeah, indeed. Uh, again, I mean, Seth seems to really be into these very long role-playing games. And honestly, I I can see why. They're, they're very entertaining. <laughs> this Pathologic is basically a game that is... It's got a very large fan base of people, like cult fandom, that it's one of those it's really, it's so bad it's good type games, you know? <sighs> yeah. Um, Let's see. The only other one I know of is Deadly Premonition. That's the one that's described as so bad it's good. Yeah, Pathologic, there it is. Yeah, and it's essentially, it is it is not fair. Like, it's not a nice game to you, but everyone who gets into it, like, touts it as being, like, just absolutely a, a, a ridiculously unique experience. Well, look who else, oh, well, look who did play yeah. Pathologic. Mandalore's played it. Yeah. Mandalore played it. So there you go. Mandalore, who was featured, in, featured at, by in proxy in this video, uh, or in, it is now played Pathologic and uh, done a review of it. Interesting. Uh, that, his might be the one that I actually watched. Really? Like a few weeks ago. Nice. So, I can't remember for sure, but... Whoever I watched, they, they showed those two characters sitting next to the fire, like 100% whenever I watched it. The other thing about Pathologic is um, that I think is really neat is you get to pick from several different starting characters that are pre-established and the game plays completely different and completely different stuff happens depending on the character you're playing as currently and then when you go back through it like you get to see the other angles from the different characters perspectives yeah but it, it's also got like this just ridiculously twin peaks vibe to everything too from what i can tell like it is a very strange game but i don't know I, i'm planning to play it at some point and see if i can get any amount of distance into it from what i hear it is absurdly difficult though but it, it seems like the kind of thing that Seth would slog his way through just to do a video about, and he would probably end up enjoying it if I had to guess. I mean, honestly, we'll, you just we'll have to see. I mean, he's he seems to have a, a good grip on just games that a lot of people would find innocuous and would just be uh, torturous to play to a certain degree. Mm. But... I think he could do it. Uh, he sent, he tends to play games with a lot of depth to them, and from what I was listening to of someone describing about Pathologic, it's got incredible depth. Like, so I think it, that's why it's in, it's got incredible depth, incredibly challenging. Like, it's kind of an old school aesthetic in terms of the graphics, sort of like Wizardry. Yeah. Um, like, uh, it really just seems like 100% up Seth Sally, if I had to guess. I'll have to go comment it on his video and be like, dude, you need to play Pathologic and do a video about it. Or you can comment it there too, that's fine. It's a P-A-T-H-O, I believe. Yeah. Just make sure. Yep, you're right. We're on the money. What was it else you said? And and do a video on it. There we go. So yeah, y'all can find our comment on Seth's original video by clicking his name in the title of the video or by clicking the link in the description that will take you directly to the original video. And yeah, I guess for now, everyone that's going to do it. So thanks again for tuning in. This was Seth Zintak uh, with uh, Wizardry 8 Extreme Roleplaying. Uh, Internet Historian was in this, but only by proxy. I'm kind of sad he wasn't actually in this video, but... Oh, well, it is what it is. Yeah. So anyway, until next time, everybody, signing off. I'm Nate. I am Nick. Take care, everyone. Peace.